Good morning, Life Church Huntsville. Welcome to our LCH at home online experience. We are so glad that you tuned in with us for today's broadcast. I wanna let you know today that even though we're not able to meet together publicly, that the same God, the same spirit, the same presence of the Lord that meets with us in our corporate gatherings is right there with you and your family in your home, in your living room, in your dining room, in your car, in your kitchen, in the hospital, wherever you might be watching today, just know that God is there. In fact, the Bible tells us in Jeremiah 23 and 24, it says, Can a man hide himself in secret places that I cannot see, declares the Lord. Do I not fill heaven and earth? I want to encourage you today that as you worship the Lord, that the same spirit, the same presence of God that meets with us in our corporate gatherings is right there with you and your family and will meet you right where you are, wherever you might be today. So let's go on into the sanctuary now as Pastor David and our team usher us into the presence of God through praise and worship. We're glad you're with us today. Change when we 
you, Lord, that when we call on your name, there's nobody like you, Father. You show up every single time. You are so great and greatly to be praised. God, you are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords, and we honor you. We bless you today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In the darkness we were waiting Without hope, without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dust Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. Kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost, to redeem the whole creation. You did not despise a cross, for even in your suffering, you saw to the other side, knowing this was our salvation. Jesus, for us, you In the 
this is holy ground. Jesus is in this room Ooh. He's making this place a stand Holy ground, holy ground Yes, you are Come on right where you are right now Just tell him he's holy The veil is torn and the door swing wide I see glory as I run inside the throne room Before you I bow The veil is torn and the door swing wide I see glory as I run inside the throne room What an awesome time of worship we've just had. Thank you, Pastor David and team for leading us in worship today. Now, we just wanna take a moment to pray for you and your needs. Our pastoral staff and prayer team is standing by, interceding for you and your family during this time. If you have a specific prayer need, or even if you have a praise report about how God has answered your prayer, we wanna know about it. Please send us an email to prayer at lifechurchhuntsville.com. Our team is receiving those emails and we'll be responding to each and every one of them. Now, before we move on to the next component of our service, let me take just a moment to pray over you and your needs today. Father, we love you today. God, I thank you for this time together. Thank you for this time in your presence. Father, I pray for every person watching this broadcast today. We lift their needs up before 
before your throne, answer prayer, heal bodies, move in a mighty way. We pray for our church, we pray for our city, we pray for our state, and we pray for our nation, God, that you would move in a mighty way, that you would touch the lives of people, send revival to our nation. Father, for all that you do today, we'll be careful to give you the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Now get ready because coming up next is a special segment of Blast Bites just for our life kids, followed by our LifeLink video announcements. Stay tuned. Hey Life Kids, Pastor Kevin here. Man, it is so good to finally get to see you and talk with you. I want you to know this, Pastor Kevin, myself, and Miss Tracy, we are missing you guys like crazy. So know that we are praying for you and we love you. But today, I'm gonna take just a couple of minutes and just kind of share with you a little bit because I don't get to see you on Sundays. All right, so I'm gonna just take a little bit of time and uh, do an object lesson with you guys today. So I hope you're okay with that. So first of all, Man, what a season we are in, boys and girls. I know you're, you're probably at home, you're having school at home, Everything is looking totally different right now. I mean, everything routine and normal is gone. And so with all of that and things you see on TV, and maybe you hear mom and dad talk about and you hear things from your friends, sometimes we can become kind of worried about what's going on. So I wanna to talk to you just for a couple minutes about, about worry and how God does not want us to worry. And so I thought about, I, I brought my bag down here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you my bag up here. And and, you know, worry is kind of like a backpack. And, you know, today you might have gone to school in your kitchen, okay? You might have only had to walk a few steps to go to school today. Isn't that pretty cool? All right? I mean, you just walk to the next room in your house and bam, you're at school. So I'm, I brought my backpack here. I'm going to pick it up for you real quick. So if you just bear with me just for a sec. I'm going to get... Uh, hold on. I got this. Hold on. Just, just one sec. Uh, oh, I promise. Just... I got this, bear with me. I need some Rocky music or something. Some Eye of the Tiger. Here we go. I need some Jenny Craig or something. All right, hold on. Okay, here we go. I don't know about you, but my backpack is super, super heavy. Man, your backpack could be heavy too, because here's why. Sometimes when we worry, it is like a super heavy backpack that we carry to school. You see, we go to school for one purpose, and that is to learn and to see our teachers, to color, to, to do things, to do our homework. But you know what worry does? Let's check out my backpack here. Worry add things to us that we don't even need. That's why my backpack is so heavy. Because look, like, look at this, boys and girls. In my backpack, I have a candle. Now, why in the world would I need a candle to go to school with? Something that's not needed. It weighs me down, just like worry is. Worry weighs us down, we don't need this, so I don't need a candle. So, like, also, look, look at this. Why in the world would I have a clothes steamer in my backpack to go to school? Do you need a clothes steamer to go to school? No way, unless you want to I guess, steam your clothes at school. That'd be kind of weird, all right? But look, this is like, this is like worry. We, we bring things that weigh us down that we don't even need. It has nothing to do with school. So I don't need that. And then also, my goodness, boys and girls, you won't believe this. You will not believe this. Somebody snuck in my backpack. Oh my goodness. Boys and girls, look who, look who snuck in my backpack. Paco, Paco got in my backpack, boys and girls. Now Paco, what in the world? Paco. 
how in the world? Paco, how did you get in my backpack? He said he's scared. He said that he's been hearing about all this virus and stuff, and he's been hiding in my backpack. Well, you know what, Paco? It's okay to be scared sometimes and worry, but you know what, Paco? God has got your back. He's going to take care of you, and he knows everything about you and what you need. Right, Paco? He said he just needed to hear that. Okay, so that's why we're here, Paco, is we're telling the boys and girls. Say hi to the boys and girls. It's okay, Paco. Don't be shy. It's, you see him every Sunday in the launch pad. It's just different today. What? He said this is kind of weird being on camera. I know, Paco. It's okay. But you know what? It's a new season, and but God's got our back. So, Paco, you can't be in the backpack. So, boys and girls, even things getting a backpack, that shouldn't even be like, like Paco. All right? But also, you know what? We get weighted down with all these heavy books in here that we don't even need. All right? So... Our, our, our backpacks get heavy all of a sudden. I mean, duct tape. We don't even need duct tape. We don't need duct tape in our backpack because that's what worry, that's what worry does. And look, gloves? We don't need gloves in here. Uh, all we need is just our school supplies. That's all we need. And look, here's the crazy thing. When all of that stuff that we don't need is gone, look how light my backpack is. I can just throw it up and it's so light because that's how God wants us. He says that he will carry our burdens for us. He makes our yoke light. He doesn't want our bag to be super heavy and, and weighing us down. That's what worry does. It weighs us down. It wears us out. It makes us tired. It makes us sweat and be grumpy because we're always worrying about stuff. So we shouldn't worry. We want our backpack to be really, really light. You know what, boys and girls? The word of God says this. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it says this, Don't worry about anything. I'm going to say it again. Don't worry about anything. That is God speaking to you and I. Don't worry about anything. Also says instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. What an amazing scripture out of the Word of God. That we don't have to worry, but instead pray about everything. So life kids, in this season when you feel worried and maybe you have some fears, the Bible says just pray. Pray about everything and God will give you the peace that only He can give. Because boys and girls, God wants us to live in peace, not fear. He doesn't want us to, to live in, uh, you know, worrisome lives and so forth. He wants us to be peaceful. So hang on that word today that don't worry about anything, but pray about everything, as the Bible says. All right, boys and girls, hey, man, we love you. We are we miss you so bad, but we can't wait to see you again, all right? So God bless you. Remember this, all right? Keep a smile on your face, a song in your heart, and a pep in your step. We love you. God bless, and we will see you next time. Welcome to Life Church Huntsville Online. We're so glad that you decided to spend part of your weekend here with us. I'm Wendy, and this is your LifeLink Weekly Update. With all the changes we are making here at LCH, we want to make sure that you stay connected. Life Church Huntsville can be found on multiple social media platforms. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Any new updates and information will be posted across each of these platforms. You can also visit our website at LifeChurchHuntsville.com. We also want to encourage you to download our LCH mobile app. Just visit the App Store or Google Play Store, type in Life Church Huntsville in the search bar, and download the app with the LC symbol. If you need any help or have any questions, please be sure to contact us at Curious at LifeChurchHuntsville.com. So stay connected and together we'll get through this season stronger than ever. We want to tell you about what we are calling LCH at Home. Until further notice, we have moved our Sunday and midweek services to a strictly online format. 
We will be broadcasting our live Sunday and Wednesday services through both Facebook Live and our brand new online church platform. You can watch us on our LCH Facebook page at facebook.com slash lifechurchhuntsville or you can now watch through our website at lifechurchhuntsville.com slash online. Through both of these streaming platforms, you will be able to interact with one of our LCH hosts in the chat window. So be sure to grab your family and gather around your computer, mobile device, or TV, and tune in for LCH at Home every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. and 6 o'clock p.m., as well as Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. We'll see you there. Our pastoral staff wants to make sure that we continue to provide our LCH family with the best pastoral care possible. If you have a prayer request or have a special need in your life, please send us an email at prayer at lifechurchhuntsville.com. Our staff will be closely monitoring this email address every day to respond to your request in a timely manner. If you are elderly and unable to get food or groceries, you may also send an email to this address and we will do our best to help. During this new season, we will do everything we can to continue to love, reach, and serve. Hey everyone, Pastor Kevin and Amy McGlamry, and we just wanted to take a moment and give you our plans for Passion Week right here at Life Church Huntsville. As you are aware, we've had to adjust our Easter plans significantly in light of the current situation in our nation regarding the coronavirus. Even though we're unable to meet together as a church, we are working very hard to provide for you and your family a meaningful Easter experience online. This coming Wednesday, we will be having a live Passion Week prayer night at 6.30 p.m. This will be an evening of worship and prayer for our church, for our city, and for our nation. We will be praying live over your prayer needs during this broadcast, so be sure not to miss it. On Good Friday at 6.30 p.m., we will have a live worship segment followed by a special time of family communion. We are asking all of our Life Church hunts for friends and family to be prepared during this broadcast with bread, juice, or whatever you have to participate in communion. We will create space during the broadcast for you to serve communion to your family, as well as create a time for you to pray together as a family in your homes. We believe that God will use this time to do something special in your lives. Finally, on Easter Sunday at 10.30 a.m. and 6 p.m., we have an incredible online worship experience planned with some special surprises that you don't want to miss. So help us spread the word and make plans now to join us this week for our live Easter online experience right here at Life Church Huntsville. If this is your first time joining us online here at Life Church, we want to say thank you for being with us today. We look forward to meeting you in person when we resume our normal meeting schedule. Thanks again for being with us. We hope to see you soon. Hey everybody, Pastor Kevin McGlamry. Indeed, we want you to stay connected here at Life Church Huntsville. So please make sure that you do that on all of our social media platforms and uh, make sure you get the latest information of things that are important to you right here at Life Church. Again, if you're a guest, thanks for being with us. We are honored that you're watching us at your home or wherever you are. And we're looking forward to a, a great day together on this Palm Sunday. Excited about what the Lord is going to do today. Looking forward to preaching to you here in just a minute. Again, just send in your prayer request to prayer at lifechurchhuntsville.com as was stated in the LifeLink announcements. We want to continue to lift up your needs, needs that are in your life that are important to you. We're going to move right into our time of giving. And I want to say thank you so very much for how you are being faithful stewards in this season. Uh, again, our church is doing everything that we can to help people in this season. And your giving helps us to operate from a position of strength to be able to do that. So thank you for how you're giving your tithe, how you're giving your offering. Some of you have even designated gifts for uh, those that need assistance uh, in this season of the virus. So thank you, thank you, thank you for how you're giving. Multiple ways to give here at Life Church Huntsville uh, through our mobile application, through uh, lifechurchhuntsville.com, the e-giving tab. And then you also, a lot of people are still mailing in their checks. You can do that here, uh, 2300 Memorial Parkway Southwest here in Huntsville, Alabama, 35801. You can do it that way as well, but multiple ways to give. Let me pray over our giving. Father, in Jesus' name, we are grateful for how you are blessing us, how you are keeping us. 
uh, how you are providing for us. And Lord, thank you for our, our, our church family and those guests who are giving, who are, who are faithful in their stewardship. And Lord, we know that we can't outgive you. And Father, even in these moments where we might have a tendency to, to, to be fearful when it comes to giving, God, there's no better place than to deposit seed into your economy. And God, we're thankful for the return that you're going to bring. So Father, honor our gifts now. Multiply them, we pray. And we thank you, Lord, for what's going to happen and, and the ministry that will move forward out of Life Church Huntsville, not just today, but in the days to come. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you in advance for how you're going to give. Hey, I look forward to preaching to you right now. I'm, I'm excited about this message. It is Palm Sunday. We're getting ready to enter in, into the Holy Week or the, the Passion Week, as some people call it. And so I'm looking forward to preaching to you today on this Palm Sunday on this thought, this topic. The crowd got it right. The crowd got it right. So if you haven't downloaded the notes yet, make sure and download the notes right now so that you can follow along uh, with me in the message. You have the scriptures and some of the main points. We'd love for you to have that uh, uh, to follow along with us. So make sure and download that if you will. Grab your Bible. Look with me in Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. We're going to start in verse 28 and read through verse 40. I know that's a lot of scripture, but but this is uh, I want to kind of set the stage for Palm Sunday and this message. The crowd got it right. This is what the Bible says. And after Jesus had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. And as he approached Bethpage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you. And as you enter it, you'll find a colt there which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as Jesus had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? And they replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus. They threw their cloaks on the colt and put Jesus on it. And as he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. And when he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for the miracles that they had seen. That's, that's important. And then it says in verse 38, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. And I, I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Here for the next few minutes, I want to preach to you on this topic, the crowd got it right. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to be together on this Palm Sunday to celebrate you. Father, this is the day that we acknowledge your triumphal entry. The day that you went down from the Mount of Olives into the city of Jerusalem. And Father, we celebrate that. You indeed are the Messiah. You are the Son of the living God. I pray that this message and preaching today would be easy, enjoyable, and effective. And the touch of the Holy Spirit would indeed make the difference. Would you open up the heart, the ear, and the spirit of the listener? Let them be receptive to your word. And God, we thank you in advance for everything that you're going to do in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. The crowd got it right. I'm reminded of the old fable that, that has been passed down that I read. It's passed down from generations to generations about the elderly man who was traveling with a young boy and a donkey. As they walked through the different villages, they came to one village and the man was leading the donkey and the boy was walking behind. The townspeople in that village said the old man was a fool for not riding the donkey. So to please him, he climbed up on the donkey's back. And when he came to the next village, the people said uh, the old man was being cruel because he made the child walk and he was enjoying the ride. So to please this village, he got off the donkey and set the boy on the animal's back and continued on his way. They came into a third village and the people accused the child of being lazy for making the old man walk and the suggestion was made that they both ride. So the man climbed on the donkey and, and they set off again and they approached the fourth village 
And the townspeople were indignant at the cruelty to the donkey because he, he was made to carry two people. So the frustrated man was last seen carrying the donkey on the road. I know it's a humorous story as we think about that, but I, it reminds me, it's amazing what people will do to please the crowd. You see, the crowd is often wrong. Popular opinion frequently misses the truth. And unfortunately, it seems that the unrighteous is usually trending. You know, from the earliest days of human history, that this has been the, this has been the same. The crowd was wrong in the days of Noah. They told Noah he was crazy for building the ark when he talked about rains and floodwaters coming. They they didn't even know what that was, but they told him he was crazy for building this ark. The crowd was wrong as they gathered at Babel. The, The crowd was wrong when Moses was on the mountain and Aaron allowed them to build a golden image of worship. Godliness was often forsaken in the days of the prophets and the dominant culture was usually wrong in the days of the early church. However, we see a huge crowd that is gathering on this day of a triumphal entry as Jesus comes into the city of Jerusalem on what we know as the first Palm Sunday. On that first Palm Sunday, they gathered, or the people gathered, and they welcomed the Messiah and the Savior of the world. This group got some things gloriously right. And I want to talk about them today for just a few minutes on the things that that the crowd got right on the very first Palm Sunday. Let's look at it together. The first thing that I would note about the crowd that got, what they got right was the crowd was right to give honor. The crowd was right to give honor. You see, Jesus had quite a crowd with him right before he gets to the Mount of Olives. We know that he had just performed a miracle with those who were blind and the crowd was following him closely as he is approaching the city. Jesus was entering into the city and the crowd immediately stepped forward to honor him. He entered on a borrowed donkey and him riding in on this donkey filled the Old Testament prophecy but it also spoke to the humility of Jesus. We read in Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9, Rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble because he's riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. You see, centuries before Jesus was ever born, he tells everyone that he will ride into the city on a donkey on the last week of his life. By fulfilling this prophecy, it reminds us that God will keep his promises. I want to tell you right now that you need to understand that Jesus will keep his promise. Every promise that you read about in the Bible, in the book, every promise in that book is yours. Every promise that God makes, he's going to keep. I want to encourage somebody right now. If God has made you a promise, you can be rest assured that he's going to keep his promises. He's not a man that he would lie for he is Jehovah God and what he says he will do guess what friend he's going to do the Bible says in Matthew chapter 21 verse 8 that the people in the crowd rushed to cushion each and every step by placing palm branches and, and even their own cloaks on the ground before him Jesus was the center of the procession and rightly so for he was the Messiah and he was worthy of honor you see we rightly honor Jesus by our care when we care for the things of God you see when we care more about the glory of the Lord than our own comfort we honor him when we sacrifice our time and our energy and our possessions we honor him when we look for ways to bless his work guess what we honor him my prayer for us as we enter into this Easter season as this is Palm Sunday as we enter into this this passion week this this holy week that we honor him by loving the things that matter to him 
We need to love his word. We need to love being in his presence. We need to love all, all people, God's people and those that don't know him because God is concerned about, about those, those things, those people. Honor him with the sacrifice for, for the things that count. Honor him with a bent knee and, and with a giving heart. On this Palm Sunday, we remember all that Jesus is and all that Jesus has done and we honor that memory and that mission as we gather with the crowd. I don't know about you, but the crowd got it right as they honored him. That's the first thing that they did. But the second thing that we see, that we see in the text is that the crowd was right to worship. You see, the people began a spontaneous worship service as Jesus passed by on the first Palm Sunday. Oh, I wonder what it was like to be there on the day when Jesus was there riding from the Mount of Olives there on the donkey with the crowds of people singing praise and shouting praise to him. They sang out the Psalms. They declared the good things of the Lord. The Bible said in Matthew chapter 21, verse 9, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the highest. They shouted it. They declared it. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You see their cries of Hosanna. A word of praise from the Hebrew word for salvation. This rang out above every bit of noise. They were declaring Hosanna to the the son of David, Hosanna in the highest. Here comes the king is what they were saying. Here comes the king of glory. They seemed or they sensed the working of God to save mankind from sin and they could not or, or could not contain songs of the loudest praise. They had to declare it with every fiber of their being. I, I hope you will worship the Lord on this Palm Sunday. We've already encountered a moment where we've been able to worship the Lord and I sense his presence even now and I pray that right there in your home that you choose to worship him with everything that you are. May I tell you that the Lord is worthy of every bit of praise that we can give him. You see, by his death, we can find life. By his work, we can find meaning and purpose in the work of our lives. By his resurrection, we have power over death and the grave. We have ample reason to praise our our Messiah, our Savior, and our Lord. I guess that's why the psalmist said in Psalm 13, 6, I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. He said in Psalm 18, 49, I will praise you, Lord, among the nation and I will sing the praises of your name. He said in Psalm 42, 5 and 11, why, my soul, are you downcast? Why are you so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God for I will yet praise him. He said in Psalm 63, 4, I will praise you as long as I live. I feel like preaching. Psalm 106, 1, praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his love endures forever. He said in Psalm 139, 14, I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful and I know that full well. And then the psalmist said at the end of Psalm 150, verse 6, he said, let everything that that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Why don't you take just a second where you are? Why don't you stand on your feet right there? And why don't you just offer up a praise to our mighty God who is deserving of the best praise you can give him? Come on, put your hands together right there. Lord, we praise you in this moment. We're grateful for who you are. We celebrate your name and you're worthy of our praise. You see, when we're able to assemble and gather again for worship, hopefully that will be sooner rather than later. We need to remember who Jesus is and what he has done for us. I celebrate Jesus because I know he saved me. I celebrate Jesus because I know he sanctified me. I celebrate Jesus because I know that the Holy Spirit has come and is the comforter and has filled me with the sweet Holy Ghost. We should praise him from the depth of our hearts and every Everything in our being. You see, Jesus told the skeptical Pharisee.
Pharisees who were gathered in this crowd who hated the praise that was coming to Jesus. They were telling him, say, Jesus, we want you to tell these people to be quiet. We, we want you to tell these people to keep to quit worshiping you the way that they're worshiping you. But Jesus said, in, in, in Luke 19, 39 and 40, as the Pharisees were in the crowd and they said to Jesus, teacher, rebuke your disciples. And Jesus responded, he said, I tell you that if they keep quiet, referring to the people, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. He said, the rocks would begin to praise me if the people didn't. I need to tell somebody in the room, you need to worship the Lord on this Palm Sunday. You need to celebrate him today. Oh, I know things in the world may not look very good at the moment, but we still have reason to praise the Lord. We still have reason to worship him. We we still have reason to celebrate the goodness of our God. You ought to praise him. You got a reason to sing. You got a reason to shout. And on this Palm Sunday, I'm reminded of this scripture. I'm not going to let a rock take my place. I'm going to give praise to the Lord for he is worthy of praise. Come on one more time right where you are. Put your hands together and give God praise in this moment. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. You are worthy of praise. I don't know about you today, but I'm not going to let a stone take my place in worship. I choose to praise his name. He, he, he's, he's still powerful. He's, he's still in control. He's still able, and he's worthy of our praise. So we see that the crowd was right to praise him, but thirdly and lastly, the crowd was right to, procl to proclaim. The crowd was right to proclaim. What is a proclamation? Proclamation is an official declaration issued by a person of authority to make certain announcements are known. Let me tell you again. A proclamation is an official declaration issued by a person of authority to make certain announcements known. One of the most remembered uh, uh, proclamations was given by President Abraham Lincoln. He issued the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1st of 1863. As a nation approached its third year of the Civil War, the proclamation declared that all persons held as slaves within the rebellious states are and henceforward shall be free. He was proclaiming that all men would be free. Although the Emancip Proclama Emancipation Proclamation did not end slavery in the nation, it captured the hearts and imaginations of a million Americans and fundamentally transformed the character of the war. After January 1, 1863, every advance of federal troops expanded the domain of freedom. Moreover, the proclamation announced the acceptance of black men into the Union Army and Navy, enabling the liberated to become liberators. And by the end of the war, almost 200,000 black soldiers and sa sailors had fought for the Union and had fought for freedom. It was an unbelievable proclamation that men were to be free. You see, when Jesus came in on the Mount of Olives that day, riding on the donkey, when he made his descent there and, and coming to the city of Jerusalem, he was making a proclamation, I'm here to set all men free. Matthew Gospels tells us that the city was shaken by the crowd's praise. People asked who it was that was passing by. And the Bible says in Matthew 21, 11, they said, this is the prophet Jesus. Jesus from Nazareth, from Galilee. You see, every time we have an opportunity to proclaim the message of Jesus, that's exactly what we need to do. Jesus was saying on that day, I'm here to make sure that all men are going to be free. All women are going to be free. All races are going to be free. Young and old are going to be free. That's what he was declaring. Oh, it wasn't going to look the way that the people thought it was going to look but Jesus was making a proclamation on that day I am the son of the living God I've come to pay the sacrifice for your sin 
And I'm going to do incredible things in this moment. You see, on this Palm Sunday, we need to proclaim the gospel message that Jesus is the only begotten Son of the Father. We need to proclaim that Jesus came to be the sacrifice and to die to pay the penalty for our sins. On this Palm Sunday, we need to proclaim that Jesus, he did die. He was buried, but he rose from the dead on the third day. Just like he said, we need on this Palm Sunday to proclaim that Jesus Christ is our Savior and our risen King. We need to proclaim that Jesus is the only way to the Father. We need to proclaim that Jesus is the only hope for this world. We need to proclaim that Jesus will return one day to claim those who have repented of their sins. We need to proclaim that those that have placed their faith in Jesus will live for eternity with Him and in heaven. This is our proclamation in all that we say and do. I want you to look at your neighbor right now and tell him we need to, you need to tell him that Jesus is the only way to the Father. Jesus is the one who came to pay the price for your sin. Jesus is the one who's coming back to get the bride of Christ, the church for us to be with him for all of eternity. So we see there was an unbelievable proclamation made. So the three things that we know that the crowd got right quickly in a recap is this. The crowd got it right. They were right to give him honor. They were right to worship him. And they were right to make a proclamation. The crowd, they got it right on that first Palm Sunday. And I hope all of us, we too are getting it right. See, Corey Ten Boone was asked once if, if it were difficult for her to remain humble. Her reply was simple. They said when, she said, when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday on the back of a donkey and everyone was waving palm branches and throwing garments onto the road and singing praises, do you think that for one moment it ever entered into the head of the donkey that any of that was for him? What a great perspective. She continued, if I can be the donkey on which Jesus Christ rides in his glory, I will give him all praise and all honor. There's something to that statement. See, my prayer for all of us on this Palm Sunday is that all believers will honor, will worship, and proclaim the name of Jesus. That we will give him all praise and all glory that is due him. You see, if we do this, there will be no need for stones to take our place. And we'll get it right. You see, the crowd got it right that day, and I want to make sure that we get it right. I want to make sure that you get it right, friend. You see, you don't have to wait. You don't have to wait until Easter Sunday morning to make sure that you are in right relationship with Jesus Christ. You don't have to wait for, uh, uh, till we're able to come back together and assemble together. You, you, can, you can make sure that you're right and you, you do it right, right now. You can, you can pray a prayer right now and I want to pray it with you. If, if you're not saved, if you don't have a relationship with Christ, I want to pray with you right now. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Father, I'm a sinner and I'm in need of a Savior. And Jesus, you are that Savior. Would you forgive me of all my sin? For I believe you're the Son of the living God, that you came to pay the price for me. You shed your blood. You went to the cross, you died, you were buried, but on the third day you got up and that you're alive and well and you're sitting at the right hand of the Father. Lord, I confess you. Jesus, I confess you as Lord and Savior of my life and I thank you for saving me. See, if you pray that prayer, friend, you are connected to the kingdom. You are connected to Jesus. You are connected to the Father. And I just pray that you'll walk in that. You'll walk in as a new creation in Christ, as the Bible says. And you can, you can praise Him. You, you can sing the song of the redeemed, one who has been forgiven of sin. You can praise Him. You can worship Him. And that's what I want you to do. So I want to challenge you on this Palm Sunday, family, guests, those who have tuned in, those who are watching. I want to challenge you to get it right. Always give Christ honor. Always give Christ worship. And always proclaim what he has given us to proclaim. That is the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amy and I, we love you today. Our pastoral team, our leadership, we love you today. I want to pray for you before we go. 
Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for joining us for this Palm Sunday. I hope it has ministered to you. I hope it has blessed your life. Come on, let's get it right, just like the crowd did on that day as it came from the Mount of Olives into the city of Jerusalem. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for my family. Thank you, God, for being with us and helping us in this season that we're in. God, we celebrate you on this Palm Sunday as we enter into a Passion Week. So we enter into this holy week where we acknowledge you as uh, we, we, we declare Hosanna in the highest to you. We declare that you are the son of the living God. We're grateful that you are our king. Thankful, God, that you paid the price for us. Thankful, God, that you did get up on that third day. We celebrate all of that. And I pray right now for the family and our friends that they would sense you and that you would be close to them, that you would help them through this week. And God, we just praise you for what you're going to do and how you're going to help us. We honor you. We love you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you is my prayer. I look forward to our next time together. Amen. We'll see you.